We haven't had this in a while. Uh, a viewer question. By the way, you can go into the comments of any video, leave a question, and we may get to it and answer it as a bonus question. Thank you, James McLean, for this one. Do you think Shane Wright, the uh, projective number one overall pick in the upcoming 2022 NHL draft, will become a star like Adam Fox or Austin Matthews, or is he overhyped? Interesting that he mentions Adam Fox here because Shane Wright is not a defenseman, but maybe you just mentioned him for the star quality of Adam Fox. Andrew, you go. Yeah, I don't understand the overhyped part because it, I don't think there's that kind of hype around Shane Wright. I think that he's the like a tier below that in terms of a first overall pick. But there's a lot of people out there this year that are not watching Shane Wright at all who are very convinced that Shane Wright is like a bust already. And I don't get the chance to watch a lot of junior hockey. So I've only seen Shane Wright play a couple of times in the world juniors, but I rely on people who do watch him all the time. And from those people, what I hear constantly is that he's not an offensive superstar, but he is a player who does everything right. And the player, the players that I've heard him compared to most often are a bigger Brennan Gallagher and Patrice Bergeron. Now, Patrice Bergeron was a second round pick. He was not considered, you know, the top end guy in his draft, which was, you know, one of the deepest drafts in history in 2003. But you look at the numbers that they're putting up in junior and it kind of shows around the same, the context of what Shane Wright's producing. So he's asked to do a lot on his team. He is still just 17, but he's not putting mm -hmm. up like Connor McDavid numbers. I don't think you can expect him to score at the level of those guys like Austin Matthews is a generational goal scorer. He is scoring even strength goals at a level that the league has just not seen. Right. It's just incredible what he's able to do. And he's also taken a step from his draft year. That's bigger than most first overall picks do take. Like he was just not expected to be this good. So I don't think Shane Wright is in that category, but he is a player who can be a line carrying, not quite franchise player. Yeah, I mean, Andrew, I agree with you. I mean, I don't watch a lot of junior hockey. I'm paid to cover the Canadians. So I don't try to pretend that I know Shane Wright, what type of player he is, because I don't. I you know, see him at the World Juniors. They didn't last very long this year. And uh, I'm like, you are relying on what people who do that for a living and what they say. And you're right. I mean, it's he's not going to be Connor McDavid. He's not going to be Austin Matthews. But he's obviously a really good hockey player because he's ranked as the top junior player in the world, right? So there's people who scout them and people who are paid to scout players think he's the best player out there. So, you know, he's, he's a center, which is something the Canadians need, obviously. Um, but if he's the best player out there, you're not going to be drafting him just because he's a center. You're going to draft him because he's the best player available. And that's one of the things I hope with Kent Hughes now is that they do just draft the best players available instead of drafting and trying to fill a hole like Mike McCarron. Mm -hmm. They drafted Mike McCarron because they needed a big centerman. They knew he couldn't skate, and they still drafted him. And Mike McCarron, as we know, has you know, been a fringe NHL player and more of an AHL player. So with Shane Wright, he's uh, you know, it seems he's obviously a really good hockey player. And if the Canadians are fortunate enough to win the uh, the draft lottery, I think there's a spot for him, obviously on the Canadians. But it's not going to be probably next year. And with you hope it wouldn't be next year, just with the way you know we would look what's happened with Galchenyuk and Kutkinyemi and other players that they've rushed into the NHL and Cole Caulfield. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, with the draft and I'm looking forward to hopefully some more junior games on TV where he's playing that I'll actually be able to watch him and form a better opinion myself on him. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. I mean, it's hard to get a real read when you don't get a chance to watch him, uh, you know, uh, often. Obviously, Central Scouting has him uh, pigeoned in as one of the, the top players available. Uh, statistics uh, prove that, that he's he has a talent. But let, let's, let's face it, uh, you know, it, it's a tough call to project the impact some of these young guys will have, especially, uh, you know, looking at him, uh, you know, uh, Andrew, you touched on, you don't know if it's, uh, you can put him in that category as a Matthews uh, type of player. Uh, he's, he's a young kid. He's got a lot of uh, growing to do. But the good news out of all this, he is... Uh, he, he does have very, very good talent, and you know it remains to be seen just how far uh, this this kid could develop and what type of impact he'll have when given the opportunity. Yep, we we'll just have to wait and see what Shane Wright. The draft is a crapshoot. Remember, yeah. you know, a guy could be taken number one overall or number two overall, and you think he's the guy, and maybe you realize you should have had the guy at number three this whole time. One guy who probably thinks about that. 
Bobby Clark with uh, <laughs> Nolan Patrick and uh, Kale McCarr. But uh, that's a whole other bonus well, episode in itself. As, as much as the crap you just mentioned, Patrick Bergeron was a second round draft pick. Yep. No, so the, Canadians the Canadians had two chances. So Shea Weber. The Canadians had two chances, I believe, to pick him. You know, it's there's not every not everybody is uh, Rick Green, who's the number one pick and uh, the best player in the world out there at that age. Did you, yeah, so I, I believe it, it, Weber it, it, and Bergeron were from the 03 draft. And uh, I guess if you're a Montreal Canadiens fan and you want to remind yourself of some sadness, I guess you look at the 03 draft because that is a stacked draft class for them to end up with Andre Kostitsi, who was a good player, just not, mm -hmm. you know. Some of the other guys. That and Rick Green was a very good number one overall draft pick, too. He was. Rick <laughs> Green was very much. <laughs> Even though he was minus four. Like I always said, I learned how to play good defense because that's all I did for the whole game was play in my end zone. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you were able to have the career you are able to have in uh, playing and coaching as well. Fooled him um, a long time. Fooled him a long time. <laughs> And, and, and what was your signing bonus as the number one overall pick back then, there, Rick? Uh, twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand. But I did, I did, pay, I did pay cash for my seven seventy-six Corvette and and go back to high school with a new Corvette as the the big kid on campus. <laughs> Berkshire, you hear this story? You hear inflation? You see? You imagine how much that twenty-five thousand would be now? I was just gonna look it. <laughs> what's, what's that value now? All right, we'll give ourselves the time to look that up. Uh, let us know in the comments. Shane Wright's gonna get a lot more than twenty five thousand bucks. I imagine he will. Uh, let us know in the comments section uh, how you feel about Shane Wright. Remember, uh, them the Canadians sucking does not guarantee that they will get Shane Wright. They may get somebody else. Who knows? But still, let us know in the comments section what you think about uh, Shane Wright from whatever you may have seen for the World Juniors or his time in junior. Uh, subscribe to the Montreal Hockey Inside Out YouTube page. Subscribe to the Hockey Inside Out newsletter and go to HockeyInsideOut.com. Uh, I think Brendan Kelly wrote something about Kent Hughes being an antidote to Mark Bergevin. That seems very interesting to read if that's your thing. So check it out.